nice avoid here on line of sight from the majority of the mayhem. The point is though controlled by the charge and they will get the first flip. Happy controls the map with that crosshair. Well, Cap comes in for the charge, but maybe a fast flip getting ready to come in for the mayhem. Into the back, Rio. Nano's the out. Driver. Not able to find it yet. Nano going to be rolling through onto him. Happy going to be taken down, but now Swan going to be eliminated. Eileen going lower. Rio pushes his way into the back, trying to duke it out with Saya player. Hits the wall, gets a little smack onto the Widowmaker. Tries to rejoin with the squad, and Shu will be able to top him up. Notice how he comes to Shu to make the e-healing easier. Now he can pile drive back onto the point, onto Chris. Get him lower and lower as the charge still maintaining control. Throughout all of this mess, but the hat goes thrown to Rio off screen, and they're able to burn down that wrecking ball. No Saya now pushing forward. Yeah, Saya has the line of sight advantage now. He's trying to have the surprise angle because Eileen, or rather, Happy doesn't know exactly where it is. Eileen is tracking, trying to figure out that information. Sombra in this Widow Widow matchup is actually super essential in finding positions because of her passive her ability to see behind walls. She could actually convey a lot of information that way. Well, EMP gonna be used by Apply. Eileen still building up one of his own. Seems like Apply is not really gonna be finding much. Takes a short hop with the Translocator. Getting topped back up. Will be able to survive. And even forces Eileen back with the Translocator of his own. Rio drops in the minefield. Chris gonna get caught up in it. Swan trying to go into the back, but he gets locked down. Hack comes in. They healed and I am. Will be able to finish him off. That can make for another fast flip in the favor of the charge. I remember Strong pushing forward here onto the point. Flip getting ready to come through. Rio gonna get hacked. But will be okay, will survive, and the flip comes in 35 to 43 at the moment. Huge play there by Shu, the star player for the Guangzhou Charge. He is absolutely the one who allowed this to happen with the follow-up bio grenade after the sleep dart. Papa holds now currently a pulse bomb, so that's one thing that they could use here to slow down the push of the mayhem. If he could find that backline pick or even stick it right on to Swan here. And for sight up for Happy. Full no, vision going to be expiring, so now Mayhem can start pushing forward again. They really have to show him of all Widowmakers in the league right now. A lot of respect when that Infrasight is up. Saya does open things with the kill on Eileen. No EMP going to be in the fight for now. Looking for a shot, sees Hago put there for a moment, but can't quite line it up. Nice BQB getting the Nano! She comes in from Shu, locks him down. BQB going to be taken out. Happy gets the headshot from the side. Shu going to be spamming away, helps take down Swan. Not only does he get the sleep there into the kill, but at the same time, he gives Rio that extra boost of health to survive with the nano boost. He controls the point. They're winning on all fronts right now. Happy line of sight control here, meaning he can see more than what Saya player could safely poke around to see. He's even going to flank here. Greedy, but it could pay off. Dangerously greedy. Applies there, scoops up the kill. Major overextension for that Widowmaker. Eileen, though, here onto the point. EMP still going to be ready to go. Try to hold that here for the overtime. Flip starting to come in, but Hammond going to be taken down. Rio able to find the kill. BQB now under some fire. Hot has to recall. Dashes back, keeps himself alive. EMP comes in from above. Apply, trying to hack them out. Hot and Eileen both going to be hacked out here for the moment. But regain their abilities, push forward, manage to find Chris. BQB going to be taken down. 99% still here for the charge. Mayhem, can they get onto the point? No, just a little bit too late as he goes up for the pile driver. This one cannot get there. The charge will take the first round on Busan. Now the question is, who's the real sniper here? Because Happy is the Widowmaker player, but Shu is the one who's coming up with the trickier, <laughs> more complicated shots in these clutch moments. The sleep darts there, the follow-up bio grenades. His understanding as well of win to nano. He's not using nano boost for damage, he's using it for survivability to keep Rio alive in a lot of these fights. We're gonna take a look at one of these sleeps again. Yeah, his here. perspective. Look, he hits Rio, and then it's the sleep oh. right afterwards. Takes him down. I knew BQB was playing close. You can see those shots going through under Rio. So it says, you know what? I'm probably going to be the next target. That was the exact time, too, when Swan came in for the engage. Did not work out because of the nano. We're going to see a complete composition swap here for Guangzhou, though. They want to run this this uh, Zarya with the Winston. Winston Zarya with the Ana variation. So very different style of 3-3 here. As it's this time Hagopun who gets the sleep. And Rio just going to be taking a nap. They get a nice shot. So they push up the top, but it's not going to be enough to finish them off. Goes straight back up top, just trying to have a little bit of a back and forth there with the enemy wrecking ball. Side player in the meantime. Gets a shot on Chara. Tag on a Rio in the back as he tries to make the exit, but not going to be able to find a kill. Ooh, this is tricky. Cap comes in for the charge. Again, can they hold on to it? Mayhem still playing far forward. 
Looking to get this flip through. Ideally, a side player wants to kill Shu, but he's just unable to get good line of sight here. He's trying his best. Now he's got a chance. Doesn't have the headshot. Shu playing around this corner. Is the Diva to help body block. Nano's going to be coming through. EMP hacks out three. Rio going to be taking a nap as the Nano goes in. A BQP. It's going to be the first one to fall. Happy scooped up a kill. Now Hagabun going to be gone. Rio getting melted off screen. It was lower and lower, but it is still just charge primarily showing up in the kill feed. They are the ones coming out on top. Despite the double sleeps here from Hagopin, it's just not enough. The Guangzhou charge have both mobility and staying power with this composition, whereas the Florida Mayhem can't get Saya player into position to have that line of sight to do damage. He only gets to fire a few shots because it's a risk every time he exposes himself. He will swap now over to the Zario, and this is worst case scenario scenario for the man. Sire player is not a Zarya player, but he has to play it here. Yeah, desperation rolling through. 55% gained by the charge. Rally's going to be out for Mylene. He's happy. There's a farm up some energy and get that all online. 40 more percent to go. But leaps and bounds ahead of Saya at the moment. Bomb's going to go out to try to find a pick. Not going to get anything. Hot is going to go straight back into it. Dropping here onto the low ground. Nano's going to be out from the Hago. Put in Sire player. is going to be the first one taken down. Happy fun of the kill. The flip comes in in the meantime. They can see here the Reinhardt down into the corner trying to play into the coven to stay alive. Under the fire, the armor pack comes in. Doesn't get a pin. Rio takes out Hago. But in the meantime, follows up for a kill onto apply. And now it'll be clean up for the charge. The very fast flip. Only 13% gained by the Mayhem. And only 39% gained by Sire player on the grab. Guangzhou Charge is running a no transcendence composition. There's no Zenyatta, so that's the biggest tool, their biggest option to engage on the point. But because he's not even halfway there yet, that's not going to happen in the next 15 seconds when they need it. Nano Boost here could keep Rio alive. He's playing for it. He's got that shatter. He's feeling it. They lock him up with the Graviton Surge. Sound Barrier comes out. Shatter's going to be catching two right here into the front line. Apply. Going to be taken out by the Fire Strike. BQP popped out as well. Rest of the two back members cap. now. Three make it four in a second. A side player gets taken down. Will be gone 99% to 13. OT going to start taking away as the charge. Look to close out Busan with a 2-0. And they've got it. Very one-sided match in the charge, dominating multiple different types of compositions, and Shu ends up being the star player on the Ana. Yep, fantastically done. Great start from the charge. Changing things up there in that last round. They get the win. Let's see if Mayhem can bounce back on hybrid when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, Charge going to be leading the series with a 1-0. Very dominant finish, especially that second round on downtown in Busan. 113% mayhem. Didn't really just stand a chance at all. Late swap, side player having to play Zarya. Did not work out whatsoever. Yeah, and you have to think that we're probably going to see some substitutions. <laughs> they were running a comp that didn't have a D.Va player either, so BQB yep. was flexing over to the D.Va. You've got Zephyr on the roster. You've got newly added McGravy as well, so... You know, going into hybrid here, I don't think you're going to try to fight fire with fire, as we saw. And here are some subs. We'll see McGravy, actually. Yeah, we'll be stepping up, subbing in for Saya player. Yep, so coming in over Zephyr. Did not expect to see that, to be honest. Well, we'll see if there's any other subs for us. And Kip will be taken to the stage as well, subbing in for Eileen. So it seems like maybe the Somber Strat's going to be uh, going out of the way, at least for now. Unless Kip wants to run it himself. Yep. We'll have to so. see what they want to do. Kib is a very, very, very good Brigida player, actually, and uh, he's shut down a lot of ultimates. He's um, targeting the right members of his team when they go low. Rio, for example, is one of his heavy targets, yep. so he can actually push through, find the positioning he needs. So, you know, it's not surprising to see Kib come in here at all. It makes perfect sense. I mean, I think back to the show match that they played versus Dynasty that you and I cast, and I'm like, he also plays a really good Ash. Yeah. But uh, I think that's a bridge too far. I don't think we're going to be seeing the Ash coming through uh, for Numbani, which will be our second map. So we'll have to see if Mayhem can, in fact, bounce back, tie us up with a 1 1. He said at the beginning of this broadcast, it could be. Uh, a very back and forth series. Some of those moments on control certainly were with the flips coming in very rapidly, but overall, Mayhem just seem like they can't hold the candle to charge at the beginning. All, honestly, a lot of teams are trying to uh, out China the Chinese teams and for, you basically mirror their styles, but it's just been pretty unsuccessful thus far because the Chinese teams have already mastered this style, and to try to say, well, this is the best style on the map, clearly charges figure this out. I'm going to copy them, bring Sai a player in. It was exciting on paper, but the execution was lackluster. And when that happened and they had to swap heroes, it was a lost map. I feel like the way we should look at this is when we head into hybrid now, our second map, this series really starts there because now sure. we're going to see more mirrored composition. Now we're going to see, uh, you know, how this all shakes up. We're going to take a look at the Lucios here real quick. Yeah, just to start things off, Chris on the side of Mayhem and Char on the side of Charge. Yeah, five deaths for Chris, unfortunately, often found there on the other end of Happy's Barrel and also... When you take a look at the sound barrier stats here, yeah, similar sound barriers, but built much faster for Chara as well. Yeah, just coming in rapidly there, 228 compared to the 309. It might not seem like that much of a difference, but you know, in Overwatch, that is uh, a very long stretch of time without yeah. that sound barrier. And on such a short map, you know, quintupled the deaths, unfortunately, for Chris. These two uh, players are actually former teammates, but they were on opposite sides of the meta Athena and meta Bellum yep. uh, rosters back in the day. Good old sister squads. Now, sitting here on the Overwatch League stage, trying to battle it out, trying to see who is going to be the best Lucio at the end of the day. Numbani will be our second map here in this series. And uh, we've already seen some shenanigans on Numbani in our last uh, series that we just had up. Certainly have. We'll see if that does continue here. <laughs> Some more crazy OT pushes. Given that the uh, the main Sombra players have swapped away, have you know been replaced, Kip coming in here for Eileen, and you see obviously the gravy swapping in. Um, BQB still has the ability to run Sombra. He will be on the Zarya to start things off here. But if they wanted to run that, it's a possibility. We haven't seen the gravy play yet, so it was tough to know if he was actually going to be the Sombra flex as many divas are. But as it turns out, it is just going to be the 3-3 for the Mayhem here. And Guangzhou is teasing us, but uh, I don't think we're going to see attack Torgo. Yeah, teasing us with a couple different things. However, I think we'd see attack Genji either. And, uh, okay. They're just, They're just waiting for the scout. Yep. It's all right. Happy's going forward. Don't get too excited. <laughs> Seems like he might be sticking through with the summer. There's a lot of damage to McGravy, actually. I think he's trying to play the mental game here, though, and make him think they're going to stick with it and yeah. they're swapping. Well, that's they can why, see the swap coming through. Yeah, that's why they see the, they stayed in the spawn so long. But obviously, it's going to become pretty obvious for the Mayhem very soon here, as right now, McGravy's already kind of scouting it out. Will be the Winston versus the Reinhardt. Yes. Swan at the moment, playing here onto the high ground. Going to start zapping away. Jumps over to the side, straight in front of the Rhine. Hasn't taken too much damage. They're doing a good, a good job of sustaining him. Armor packs and all, having to be used. Charge going to drop down onto the low ground. Kip going inside. Rio managed to get rid of Apply. So already first kill going the way of the charge, but Shoot quickly answered for. 
So they keep trying to push in. McGravy playing onto the point at the moment. BQB getting pushed back. Chris dangerously low. Fire Strike actually almost killing off the Zarya. Charge will have full control of the point for now. At least two and a half ticks you would expect to be gained here. And also because they were so low when they did grab it, Chara is going to boost up the surge ahead in Lucio ult percentage here with okay. extra healing. They can't even contest it. Oh. And, and they get caught up and they have to exit very swiftly. Chara with this lead means they can play more aggressively. They have that fallback. Jump in, happy going lower and lower. It's top back up. They do lose out on Hoppa's mech. They'll be spamming away, looking for a target to try to get this one ready to roll. Or hoping for a swift death, at least, to uh, get back in. Yeah. Those Chris is looking for the setup here on the high ground. We talked about this a lot today with the Lucio play. Chris is trying to hide, then come around and knock someone out of position. Here he comes. Jump forward, shoe going low, top to back up. Charge. Numerous ultimates to work with here. Nearly finds one. McGravy, very fantastic takeaway on the happy scrap. That's going to be a nice debut moment for him, at least. Now cutting his way back. Bomb's going to be ready to go, throwing it straight up into the air. They're locked up. Grab releases him, and he'll get a pop on the happy, taking him down. Solid start for him thus far as Mayhem maintained control. Not only does he get the Defense Matrix Absorb and the Self-Destruct kill there, but he actually did a majority of the damage in that fight. Good control and usage of his missiles and also just his standard left-click attack. Doing it again here on the high ground right now as Guangzhou is getting peppered on their approach to the point. So I'm just going to be jumping back. Primal Rage now available. Some go, can go a little bit more ham. He's looking for some knockoffs. Get stunned up. Trying to rejoin in with his squad still. Looking for the Rhine. Almost takes him out. Chara going to be taken down. Now Rio followed up on. They finish off two. Still looking for more. Just keeping them gated back in the spawn. And this is now when Guangzhou starts to feel the pressure. Great start. Very fast take. But unfortunately, unable to stabilize here. The cart's rolling back. The high ground control has been really good for the Mayhem and Gravy. Making sure they can keep that. And he's again doing so much damage up there with the missiles. Look at how low everyone is by the time they touch the cart. Yep. Zapping his way back up, nearly 50% to that next Primal. Shadow's been alive for Rio. Oh, shoot, yeah. Has to use the Transcendence. Fueling the pressure, pops that one. They do manage to knock McGravy out of that back. Grab now gonna be coming, or start rather, Sound Barrier gonna be coming through for the Florida Mayhem. Starting to work their way up. Swan jumping back up into the front line. McGravy did not get taken down in the pilot form. Pistoled his way back into the back. So now has that ready to go. One going low, just trying to stay alive. High energy here for Happy, pushing up. Runs out of ammo as he goes around the corner. Cannot finish him off. Now it's going to be another grab bomb combo coming through as McGravy looks for the pick, but BQB is just scooping up all the kills before he can get and it. Achilles, we watched that moment where McGravy forced the trance out of Shu. This becomes incredibly relevant just moments later when the grab comes through from BQB. There's no way to mitigate that damage. There's no transcendence there. So huge micro play from McGravy ends up big picture, making a huge deal, making the grab for BQB twice as effective as it would have been otherwise. Jump in from behind again. The Primal Rage going to be coming out. Shu under pressure. Doesn't have that trance up. But they do a lot of damage over to Swan. But he jumps back down right on top of Rio. One final smack will finish off the Reinhardt. Now he's right back to his zapping ways, sitting on top of the spawn. I feel like the real focus here for the Guangzhou charge should be to control this high ground. Try to punish McGravy at range. Maybe with some right clicks coming through from Shu. Hot Lock can control this. But they're taking the low ground approach. And they keep taking so much damage on their way in. It's insane. Papa nearly demacked on the way over. I mean, they got to set up for a massive bigger bang combo here with that self-destruct in the grab. Throws it into the back, McGravy takes it away again. Another one here on Nambani. Now BQB gets rid of half of the bomb, still goes up from Hoppa. He doesn't find anything, transcends that from Shu. BQB still building up for another Graviton Surge. Shatter gets dropped by Rio. He manages to find one with a fire strike. But now he's going to be taken down. BQB finds the kill. And Mayhem are just stripping away the time bank. This is huge. Right now, McGravy leads hero damage at 3,800 to Hotpaw's 2,600. And that's because of this high ground control. Well, we'll see those chat stats change quite a bit when it's swapped around here. And when he doesn't have that high ground control. But as it is right now, I mean, he is just lighting them up. Yep, Rally going to be out from Apply. Pushing their way back over, gaining control of the cart again. It's barely advanced this entire time for the charge. BQB holding alt. Primal's out from Swan again, goes into the back line. He's just completely knocking them every which way. They don't know which way to look. No matter where they end up, they are still surrounded by the Florida Mayhem. 
Jump back forward, trying to get the finish there onto Kim. Zapping a couple more seconds, and he will be able to get him just for that extra bit of time. Now it's 35 left on the clock. I just feel like there, there was never a, any indication from the charge that they were going to try to control this high ground. They keep coming from the spawn down here, and they are way behind in all sorts of metrics right now because of it. Once again, they do get through this time without taking too much damage. They're yeah, pushing their way up. They still have to worry about this. Shu at least does have the Transcendence ready to roll when the grab comes in. Bomb's gonna be thrown down. They lock him up in the back line. Bomb's not finding anything. Now McGravy trying again with one of his own and he gets a double kill. Happy and Chara both gonna be taken out of the fight. OT gonna start rolling through. Hotbot trying to keep that card contested. Swan just causing so much chaos, knocking everyone away from it. As the OT starts to tick down, Shu going off the side of the map. And Swan comes up with another major kill. Rio tries to push up into the front, but he gets melted down, as does Chara. A final tag onto the card for the OT, but it's going to tick down. And Florida Mayhem gives this a is, monstrous defense. This is a new Mayhem. This is not the same Mayhem we've been watching. And you could feel that. With this new lineup, you know, Apply comes through. He's really hitting his strides on the Brigida. You've got McGravy maximizing damage. We're going to take a look Speaking at the Destruct again here. He gets up in this angle. It's perfectly placed. He's already pistol on his way down, and it's just going to perfectly time connect here. And there's just no way to stop this. You're stuck in this position. Nice combo setup with BQB. But look, the guy is so new, you know, he doesn't have his name printed on his jersey. He didn't die once either. Zero deaths, practically perfect defense here. Not to mention that one time he remaxed it, he pointed out yeah. he was super low. Uh, this is the player that Florida Mayhem needed, I feel like, what we're seeing <laughs> right now. You know, Zephyr's had his his moments for sure. And we're, we're judging him based off one defense, yeah. mind you. One half of Numbani. But I can tell you right now, I am a believer <laughs> that this guy is going to really add some positive change to, the, to Florida Mayhem. Like, let's see what happens now that he's going to have to. He's not going to have the high ground for free with, uh, with BQB, who also had that controlled. They're not going to have it for free here on the attack. They're going to have to earn it. And as the attacking team, they're not going to be able to maintain that very easily. But still, I mean... Damage output right now. McGravy at 56.94 versus Hotbot 3600. So, insane difference there. 2,000 extra damage gained. Well, let's see what Mayhem can get done here on their own attack. Some swaps going to be coming through. Yep. They push like, their way forward. We'll just be swan swapping over onto the Reinhardt. I think they were considering running. The Sombra as well, certainly possible, but not very common right now to run in that type of composition. Now, it is going to be the Reinhardt versus the defensive Winston as usual. And Rio, need to make sure he uses his leap correctly here, because that's one way Winston's die. Well, jumps straight in on top of him, stunned up. The Swan is going to be the one taken down. Kib coming up with two. And that will be the cleanup here on the Mayhem. So the first attack out, not going to be benefiting them much at all. Unfortunately not. Swan the first to die in that fight. And, you know, the leap there from Rio, he actually used it to maximize damage. He went up and then landed on the entirety of the team. Then with Tezla's gun, he did a lot more than that. And he's sitting at 55% of his primal rage, which in a longer fight here to defend, he certainly can get so a great start so far for the charge. Well, second attempt going to be coming through. Goes in for the leap again. Swan McGravy going to be the focus from the side of the charge. Taking him lower and lower. Rejoining here onto the high ground. Now the Prime Warrior is going to be coming through. Has a perfect corner on him. BQB just going to get something in. But Chris actually follows up for the kill. Good focus fire comes back out from the Mayhem as yeah. they do scoop up that kill. But it's not enough for them to push out. Unfortunately not. And Rio, because he is Winston, will be able to come in quickly. They're going to try to use this window out with this rally to come through. Yep, dropping their way down in onto the point. We'll start ticking this one up. 2.20 remaining on the clock. Rio swaps to Ryan. It looks like they're just simply going to try to delay, but they will give this up. Give up the majority of it at least. Well, they start pushing it. their way in. Hotbot does manage to get the contest here onto the point. Swan in the front. Gets Azaria bubble swinging away. Chris tries to go in for the stun. Doesn't quite get the connection for it. 
BQB, he's the one still trying to catch up here Huge to get grabs. that grab online. Does lock them in. The bomb going to be dropped in right behind the shield. Great, the Gravy going to try to answer back with the bomb of his own. This time not going to find anything with the shatter. Comes out. It's absolutely huge for Rio, but the sound barrier from Chris is just even better. Shatter out. Not. Locks up Chara, but the transcendence is there from Shu to try to keep him alive. They push their way back in. Swan going lower and lower. The armor pack not enough to keep him alive. Now BQB throws down that grabs on search. The sound barrier is in from Chara. Charge trying to stay in the fight, and it seems like they might just be able to come out on top of this. As McGravy does get popped out of that mech. Rallies in from Kim. Tooth and nail at the moment. The charge just trying to deny away this point A cap. Florida Mayhem a bit connected. McGravy trying to pistol his way back into the mech again. 87 at the moment. Very close. Swan swaps back over onto the wrecking ball. Drops him with a pilot driver. Opens things up as Rio gets taken down. Now Chara gone. Hoppa popped out. Seems like this is exactly what they needed to just cause so much disruption. They didn't know which way to look. They get taken down. The cap will come through three and a half minutes for Florida to go 55 meters. Some very impressive mechanical plays by each player on the Mayhem, as we're going to see a stagger here, rare on attack. But I do want to point out Guangzhou Charge's quick decision to swap Rio to Ryan delayed and then got onto the point. They bought a ton of time, which is so critical. Rather than giving it up with a short push like this, they made that decision very last second, but still were able to commit and delay further. They actually stay ahead in ultimates as well, or even, I should say, in this case. All right, they need to tag onto this, though. Yep. Have to touch the cart. 1.89 left to go. Grab online, throws it straight here onto the bus, locking them up. Transcendence is in from Shu. Trying to keep them alive. Focus fire, not good enough to find any kills in the fight. Bomb comes out from McGravy, doesn't get anything. Bomb now from Hotba, manages to get BQB. A one for one exchange so far. Chris, however, has the sound barrier, throws it down as they push forward and start finding kills. Swan swinging away, comes up with two. They knock Hotba out of the mech, they'll clean him up and they will push their way in, in the victory, tying it up one to one. Very tough to win a fight with your Zarya being the first one to die. Great support ultimate there by Chris. Two great sound barriers back to back. He's able to help them survive through, win that fight and take the map. Well, Florida look much more than alive this time here. Getting the win on a hybrid. Let's see who takes the lead when we come back for assault after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered.
The charge came out hot in our first map, but the mayhem stepped things up on Numbani. And now after two games, we're all tied up, one apiece, here at the half. Welcome back into the Blizzard Arena, everybody. It's Bucket, we got the crew. It's Bren, it's Zoe once again. And this time around in our matchup, we saw damage dealers in a control yeah. map, Bren. Not just tanks and healers today. We absolutely did, Pucket. I've got an insights powered by Intel that really just describes how Happy was enabled so much during this match. The first thing I want to point your attention to is Eileen, this guy here on the Sombra. He's stalking Swan, right? You know, like a dingo after a baby, like a lion after a gazelle. I don't actually know. But this is the key here because he's trying to shut down Swan, getting those hacks off, disabling him so that he can't jump on this guy, Happy. And that enables Happy, this entire map, to just pop off like he usually does. Ouch. This guy is Hexagram, Ouch. biggest uh, biggest fan, I think, or the opposite Other way, way around. Yep. Say. Yeah, you know, English Hex loves him. Maybe Hex mutual. does love this guy know. because he's a fantastic Widowmaker player. And it's those little plays, you know, that kind of synergy that the Guangzhou charge has throughout their sort of lineup. The fact that they can play the Sombra, the fact that they've got these class Widowmaker players. They can pull out these type of compositions and get the better edge over the Florida Mayhem, despite the fact the Florida Mayhem will kind of match them as well. So in my ranked games, if I see a Widowmaker, just insta-lock Sombra and hope they have a Wrecking Ball. Sure, yeah. Exactly. All right. Just got that one under our well, belt. But Thanks. on a serious I'm note here, Zoe, <laughs> we need to welcome someone to the league. He goes by the name of McGravy, and he just came over from the Dallas Academy team Whoa. to the starting lineup here for the Florida Mayhem. The kid's popping off on the oh, first day. He is. I don't think we've ever seen a debut that clean. He went 23 and 0. That man didn't die a single time. First map, first round. He ate two grabs right there and then. Two was, grabs. Yeah, two grabs. Two grabs. Just like that. First round. Not even in the second round. He just like popped that out. He did the 2K more damage than Hoppa managed to do on his diva. So overall, that was a clean debut from uh, McGravy. Love the name too. By I love it. And the tank line's looking much strong. If you look at just the Divas, though, here's how McGravy matched up against Hoppa. Bren, what are the biggest numbers jumping out to you there? Zero deaths on McGravy for his debut match. That's pretty cool. That's pretty poggers, if I do say so myself. I mean, he's probably going to be pretty pleased with this performance, but I'm also very impressed just consistently, I guess, with Florida Mayhem and their ability to just slot these uh, Western English-speaking players into a mainly Korean lineup and still get results. I think that's the real takeaway here is the fact that Florida Mayhem is setting their team up for success throughout the entirety of the season. All right, well, I think all of us are agreeing that Florida's playing stronger than we expected in the pre-show, so we're at the half. I'll give you the opportunity to flop. Bren, are you still going with your charge prediction? I'm sticking with the charge. So are you sticking okay, with the charge? I'm sticking with it. I believe in the Florida men. That's right, <laughs> Florida's coming back and winning this one. We'll see how they do it on the other side after the commercial break. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are halfway through this series between the Mayhem and the Charge, but everything is currently tied up one-to-one. -one. Mayhem had an absolutely dominant defense there on Nimbani. Charge could just not make it very far at all. And then, uh, you know, a little bit of hesitation, some bumps in the road on their own attack, but they got there eventually. I mean, McGravy just did way more damage than the Hoppa did overall in a lot of those fights. They also had the high ground, so BQB could do the same. And, I mean... It's a, it's a rough situation when you just can't get that taken away. Well, here we have Kib still going to be taken to the stage. No substitutions, as I do understand. And he's going to be joining us on the Watchpoint post-show desk. So make sure you guys stay tuned after the matches have completed. Go ahead and get some insights from him. Yep. A little bit more spotlight for this guy. It is relatively unknown before Overwatch League. Very good player. Good Horizon. Asking. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying Horizon is going to be our map. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say we could find out which hero he would want to be stranded on island with. Yeah, maybe. It's going to happen. Maybe we'll figure that out. Sorry. All right, here we go. So, Horizon. One of these teams going to be taking a lead unless they get to a draw. What? Yep. That's so, always possible. Always have to have that caveat. BQB probably just going to scout here, then head back. This is going to be the attack first for Mayhem. So we'll have this Reinhardt Zarya coming through. Defensive Winston from Rio. Once again, he did so much damage on the defense to start things off there on Numbani. Didn't lead to a victory in the end, but it was impressive to watch. He's going to try to use this New York style push where you get the bubble and oh. then gatekeep everyone out. This is what New York has been doing a lot. Yep. You get so much energy for your Zarya and you build ult charge at 46 at the moment. And now they can't get out or rather in. Makes it uh, pretty complicated to get back in. Rio waiting for the leap. Likely having to have this call come through from one of his teammates. Now going to be going up onto the high ground, contesting with them. They can make this work. Florida Mayhem. Going to work their, make their way over onto the point. Rio still playing forward. Nice knock down there onto the low ground. So Mayhem going to be rerouted. And the idea there was to use Chara together to cut Swan off. It didn't work out the way they liked, but it, they still do maintain control of this point. Mayhem wants to fight at range here, which is interesting because, yeah, they could just use the point, the tag, to force Guangzhou to come to them, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Oh, Primal's going to be up. Hagopun just going to be zapped into the back line. No support for him. No one coming to his rescue, so already one going to be lost. Now BQB taken down. It'll be cleanup time here for Rio. Trying to get the, the knockout here onto McGravy's mech, but seems like that's a bridge too far. Won't be able to take that one down. This is an, another problem, too, with how this went down for the Florida Mayhem was they did send McGravy onto the point. The tank line got disconnected. Hagopun dying like that is something that should never happen. Yeah. Gotta assume that maybe armor pack off cool that, or on cooldown. Yeah. It's really weird situation. And now, you know, they're definitely feeling the, the lack of ultimates here, especially if Swan so far away from a shatter and they're gonna have to take this part they know rio doesn't have primal rage because he's just used it very recently it's halfway to another one but still they know it's not available so coming through here is safe again now they got to make sure chara doesn't knock them on their bridge side approach rio broke off from the main group and not going for that high ground anymore just playing low working the way onto the point the first hit getting ready to be grabbed here we'll snag that nearly six ultimates up for the mayhem grab's gonna be set by happy one locking down, Pin comes in, Char gonna be eliminated before that sound barrier can come through. Bomb out from McGravy, not gonna find anything, but Chris gets taken down by Hot Bus, so an exchange on the Lucio so far. One for one for either side. They have, however, in onto the point, the second tick, getting ready to be snagged. Uh -oh. Working their way up, dive in the back, comes through from Rio. Primal Rage is available, and he's gonna pop it instantly, but the stun comes through, they melt him down, but he manages to get out with his life, but he's not disrupting the team at the moment. Goes Great back barrier. In. Sound barrier comes through. Now going to be matched by Chris, but he only gets himself. He gets just nobody else on the floor to Mayhem. That's going to be probably it. The charge should be able to defend this A now. A major botch, and now they will push forward, and everyone's going to be taken down. Not sure where Chris was, but it was... Uh, a very devastating position for Lucio, he, not getting his team. He may have been disrupted into where he wanted to be and knocked into an unfavorable position when the grab hits. That's McGravy's first death of the map, by the way. It will be taken out here. But it is now a very dire situation for the Florida Mayhem. BQB with low energy. You do not have a transcendence to deal with Happy's grab. His last grab was low energy, but it was enough. Especially when Chara, or excuse me, when Chris was unable to hit the big sound barrier there. One last shot. It's going to have to take a miracle that you have to think. 
Yep, 10 seconds remaining. Made it up to 87.1%. Trying to go the distance, get that extra four minutes on the clock. Only 25 energy here for BQB at the moment. Hesitation Grab here. Online. They're waiting until the last second. Now they will push their weight over onto the point. OT gonna be forced out, but Chris the first one to fall. Grab comes in. They lock Char up here onto the wall, but he's not gonna be taken down. Transcendence is out from Shu. Keeps him top top. Hogapun doing his best. The bomb's in straight on top of the shield. Not gonna be able to find any kills. The gravy nor with his. Gets back into the back, but Swan's gonna be the first one eliminated in the backup. All of these ults being thrown around. The gravy now popped out. BQB's already gone in the charge. They've done it. They're holding on to it. 87.1% is all that they surrender on point. point A. Very solid defense here for the charge. That one missed sound barrier, that was the thing they needed most in that fight. And you know, it, it just didn't connect. Everyone on the side of the Florida Mayhem would have been back up at high health pools. They would have been able to heal through the damage after all the ults have been used. But because it didn't hit anyone but Chris, it was the solo barrier. That means that they're just, they're dead in the water. That was yep. the one ultimate they could not mess up. And it didn't work out. Major turning point in the fight. Again, not quite sure what had transpired in that moment. Like you said, maybe he got isolated away from his squad. Maybe it was all the disruption coming through from Charge, knocking his teammates away from him. We'll have to wait and see, and here we go. Replay will be coming in, so trying to join in with his squad. Yep. Pushes up oh, the top. He misses the oh, jump. Oh, no! So that's what happened there. Okay, so he missed the jump, so unfortunately no LOS to get that heal across, or rather the barrier, the shield to his teammates. If you take a look at it, unfortunately, very weak stats. 0-3. Oh, and only one barrier created versus Chara, who stands at 9-3. and three. You only want to see that if you're playing free-for-all mystery heroes. That's that's about it. Sound barrier created one. That's the only time that you want to see that stat. Chara, on the other side, six sound barriers provided. So, you know, these are the kind of things that you do see in a matchup that's rough where Florida's being forced to enter from outside. A lot of these problems can occur. We will see potentially here the uh, Symmetra attempt to port to the point. We saw this from Atlanta once already. It looks like they want to utilize it to just avoid the comp and then get on the point. They'll probably swap once they see yep. what's going on here, and that is what we see. Unfortunately, it's just not a comp you could use if there's no Orisa uh, set up because they're just going to chase you and they have better damage output. They're going to be ahead of an ultimates. It seemed like cool. maybe a little bit of debate about what they wanted to go for, but yeah. Appy does in the end swap over to the Zarya. Okay, so... She's going to come into this point. It's going to be mirror matchup. High ground advantage, obviously, to Florida Mayhem for the time being. Weird jump there on the Winston, actually. That's going to mean that Charge gets free push around here. They don't have to deal with him at all. Yeah, does not zap them whatsoever. Does not route them outside himself. They will be pushing out that way. But the Winston, this is when you want the Primal Rage to be ready to be built up. Because if you get that Primal Rage off, you start smacking them outside in space. Uh, they're just going to go floating off into the distance and get taken out of the fight. The QB and McGravy already getting tagged up below half HP, have to retreat. A lot of fire coming in onto the mayhem. Just They're on the this point. Down. They're on it. The first tick's going to come through for free. Charge working their way up. Second tick now getting ready to come in. Swan finally jumps into the back. Happy Swan high away. She's going to be taken down. Kip gets taken out as well. Good start to the mayhem. Denying away at least that second tick. If Happy could live, it would be huge, alive. but he can't. No. Can't get it, Hoppa. Hope he get popped out of the mech and likely staggered pretty brutally, you would expect. He's yeah. gonna go run outside. Luckily for the Mayhem, too, Hagupin was able to build a lot of that transcendence healing on this defense. It's slow mo. Goodbye. Right there. But uh, now the, the big concern is going to be can he use it in the right moment, right? If Guangzhou Charge could force him to trance early, then they're going to have a huge opportunity to get the most out of Happy's grab. He did lose his energy because he was killed in that last fight. He was unable to escape. So there is still hope. There's still light at the end of the tunnel potentially here for Florida if they can make this happen. Well, they had one stellar defense there on Nimbani. They're going to take the outside approach again, perhaps here. Yeah, pushing Work. their way through. This is a lot more dangerous when yeah. you take a look at Swan's alt charge. Exactly. Swan they're thinking could, about it. Yeah. I think they're probably tracking it. They're like, no, 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 I think he's close. Yeah, Charo's probably tracking the ultimate. Says, you know what? This is just not worth it. They tricked him to come out here and wait, though. And now Swan's actually up at the front. He's vulnerable. Good heals coming through from apply. Grabbing away. That's going to be the grab coming through. Locking him up. Instantly, the transcend is pushing forward for Hoppa. Put, trying to find the kill. What Hoppa gets two. With that's up the struck. McGravy only able to answer back onto the baby diva. Denying that remake. Now Kip falls up onto apply. Massive advantage here for Guangzhou. 
And given that they've already taken a tick, it seems like this might just be the closeout here on Horizon, working their way up. Looks that way. There's just no way to defend this anymore. Swan trying to use that primal. Not enough. Yeah, just he's not enough. trying to leap his way back in. Does actually tag in just before. 0.8% is all that they need left, but Swan will get cleaned up, and the charge will be able to take it, moving up 2-1 in this series. Chris misses the barrier, and that's pretty much it for the map. We'll never know what would have happened on B, since that sound barrier did not connect. It's charge you come in with a standard, normal attack to win it out. If they do, 2-1 the, the lead. Can they close it out when we come back? We'll find out. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Seems like right now this match going in, the pendulum swings back and forth, back and forth. Very good start for the charge, very lackluster to Mbani. Mayhem looked fantastic. Then we come into Assault, and charge takes the lead now at a 2-1. So clearly Escort, Mayhem's going to dominate. Yeah, it's, it feels like, you know, the ball is now in Mayhem's court, though, here to, you know, as, you know, it just keeps swinging back and forth to make this a dominant performance to bring us to the final map. It's not looking terrible for the Mayhem by any means either. I mean, that was a, a map that could have gone totally different way if Chris was able to hit that sound barrier, right? Because yeah. then they live, you know, the fight goes on. It's a very different scenario. So it's tiny moments like this at the highest level of play in Overwatch that make all the difference. So, and we're going to take a look at some of those stats actually from that last match on the Lucios here. And it's not that Chara absolutely destroyed him by any means. In fact, Chris had a higher healing output, but the sound barrier efficiency because of that missed barrier here is triple for Chara. And obviously he ends up with a 15 and two scoreline with the one match versus Chris, who's got the 4-4. Yeah, and also just not really able to get in there, get that uh, involved in the kills. You can see four eliminations to the 15 that Chara was able to scoop up for himself. So. Much more involved in the team effort. Chris, unfortunately, just lagging a little bit behind there. 
you know, on horizon. So rough tidings for them. Let's we'll see how they're going to fare on escort as we get ready to go into what could be that final map. But first, we will have some substitutions coming in. So we'll take a look at that. Trevik move back in to a huge cheer from the fans. And coming in as the veteran of this squad, one of the longest standing Overwatch players we have, actually. Zephyr will come in for McGravy as well. So, you know, we'll see if this ends up working out for them. I imagine this is just going to be a Diva and Brigida swap, but they may have something specific prepared here as we head into Escort. It will be Rialto. We'll have to wait and see. So, yeah, Rialto. To close things out, very 3-3 three, three centric this map is. So, see if Tavik is going to bring something different to the table. Charge, however, happy with their roster at the moment. Joke not intended. So Kim going to be staying through there. But can they close this out? Can they just get a 3-1? Take this nice and easy? Or will this go the distance? Will we go to another game five? Decide it all on a tie break. So when we talk about what went well for Florida Mayhem, it was mostly the Numbani defense, right? Where they had the high ground control, they were able to prevent Guangzhou Charge from retaking it. Yep. And that's when BQB and McGravy had so much success. McGravy had that deathless defense. And that's what Florida Mayhem has really hit their stride with. And this map's architecture is purely high ground versus low ground focused. So it looks good for the Mayhem if they could do that again to bounce back here, given the map. But we don't have the same Diva player in. It's Zephyr coming through. So we do have, you know, some questions about how his performance goes versus what we just saw from McGravy. Hotba just going to be scouting for the moment you would expect. Hello, hello. Chris does want to stick through with it, but now the answer is going to be no. We'll, we'll shift over. Yep. Chris just checking there for the Sombra. Let's see if he can find it. This is going to be... Now, as you expect, Mirror Cops outside of the Reinhardt versus Winston. Winston defense. Push up over the top there, just trying to disrupt Swan. Still just sitting here with his squad. Finally drops down. Going to be the only one, though. The rest of Mayhem still playing upstairs. Keeping this contested at the moment. Charge have to do something to try to break this. Ooh, they're going to actually go into this... Uh, hotel here, but that's not actually where they want to be. So much free damage will now go over to the Mayhem. Yeah, Chara under some fire, goes low. Managing to stay alive, Orb of Harmony coming through, as well as his own healing. Keeps himself topped up into the fight, but the cart's still going to be contested. So cannot advance. Mayhem rejoin inside, all out scrappy. Battle Primal Wave is going to be coming through. Stomp there on a Chara. He'll be taken down. Hoppa now knocked out of the mech shoe. And the rest of the squad is going to be cleaned up. That is going to be the wipe coming in. Mayhem, very Once nicely again, done. Better understanding of how to use these high grounds, forcing the charge to go into the hotel, trapping them there, and maximizing damage with the Winston. Very well played here by the Mayhem. Utilizing this high ground on both sides here as well. You can see Swan on the left, BQB and Zephyr on the right side. If Guangzhou charged to try to take this angle, they can back up and they still maintain that high ground. Zap's coming in, Shu nearly going down. Holds on to the transcend. It's not going to be hitting that in a panic situation. BQB up top. Grab going to be thrown down. Locking him up right inside. Could just be the cleanup. It seems like it will be as Rio will be eliminated. Alt still getting stacked up for the charge. But they have to start advancing this cart right now. The Florida Mayhem have a chokehold on it. 155 remaining on the clock. And welcome to all of our Disney XT viewers to catch you up. And we're currently 2-1 in the series right now. Guangzhou Charge leading Florida Mayhem, trying to even things up. Self Destruct going to be thrown in, but the shield comes up from Rio. Going to be blocking that one out. Chatter comes down, and Swan's going to get locked up and melted. Now they can finally start advancing this card. Primal Rage was almost up for the Winston here for the Mayhem. Needed that. Maybe he could have survived, but does get punished. Now this is going to be... The opportunity that the Guangzhou Charge really need here to finally get this map into their hands. Fortunately, the grab being required for that last fight means this choke here, this archway that, you know, separates them to the first point is actually going to be so difficult to take. Look at this high ground drop down. Jump into the back again. Rio, however, still going to be safe. Winston damage not going to be that meaningful. Just zapping through the shield. But now Primal Rage will be coming up, trying to spread out the members of the charge. Rio is going to be the first one taken down. The sound barrier is a little bit too late to try to keep the Reinhardt in the fight. Chara has to be a little bit quicker with that judgment. 
Instead, they lose out. And Mayhem, they're going to gain control over this corner again. Really reminiscent of, you know, the missed barrier we talked about with Chris just moments ago. Chara, his former teammate, misses it this time as well. And that may be what cost Charge A. I mean, that was absolutely necessary there to save uh, his teammate. And now they've got the transcendence. At least they've got that. But high ground control still to Mayhem. They're going to try to retake it here. Uh, Mayhem is going to avoid. Full hold could very well be coming in. 20 seconds remain. The Graviton Surge locking him up. Rio on the outside. Hotpa as well. Taken out of that mech. Charge struggling to get back to the cart. They still have so very far to go. At least a single point is what they would love to have, but no chance at a back cap. Florida Mayhem, they're not playing up. They're watching the cart. They're making sure they just push everybody away from it. Up to Chara to tag the point because there's no hot bar. They get the tag in, the grab comes through. Sound Barry trying to keep everybody alive as well as the Transcendence now available for Hagabun. Pops that one instantly, but it's not in time to keep Swan alive. Zephyr going to be dropping the bomb. Managed to find a pickup on the Chara, one of the more elusive members here of the charge. They're still grouped up behind the Rhine Shield, starting to advance a cart closer and closer to A. Florida Mayhem. It's very, Can they stop this? It's very important that Happy has high energy here in this choke point where he's going to be able to do a ton of damage. Oh, Rally's going to be out. Swan rejoining the primal range. Nearly ready to go. Bomb into the back from Hotpa. Looking for a pickoff. Unable to find it. Can he make it back into the mech? It's going to be the question. The answer is yes. He has the prediction of his squad. And they managed to find the enemy Winston again. Rav, Rav comes through. Locks up one. Rio gets melted down. But Mayhem needs so much more to stop this cart. It starts pushing again. 3.7 meters. Two and a half now. Mr. Vic is just swinging away like a madman in the front lines, trying to keep everybody healed up. Goes in for the sun. Primal Rage comes back in. Transcendence is out from Shu. If they can just get him away from the cart, the OT bar is going to start plummeting, but they haven't been able to display some members of charge for long enough. Happy's got a grab now. High energy. Chara up over the top, drops to the barrier, catches everybody that's alive. A little bit too late to save Shu's life, but it might just be enough for them to finally work their way across to A. Bomb in on top of the cart, looking for the pickoffs, and it's, it's going to be a triple. Welcome to point A, it would seem here for the Chargers. They look to clean things up. Swinging away, Zephyr will be taken down. Hogaput does not stand a chance. They will get a second lease on life through the charge. Two and a half mi minutes bumped up. Now, Shu dying again because Chara's late barrier was concerning, but Happy had high energy, and that means more damage around that zone. And he was really the one doing the majority amount of the damage. It's the bomb coming through here from Hoppo, which he builds during this grab, that actually turns this for them. Yeah, nice shatter as well from Rio. We've yeah. seen this many times. So basically, when you're stuck in a grab like that, it's hard to outplay the shatter. And then Hoppa builds the last part of the self-destruct. Very fortunate he was so close to that. Otherwise, this might have been a different scenario. High ground, jump down here. Well, that's going to be the barrier this time. Chris is able to go ahead, catch everybody on the team. Nicely done, but I mean, it's just so non-committal from the charges here. Okay, you threw that out. Let's go ahead and kite back. Grab this, come through. However, they lock him up. Char is going to be taken down. So good re-aggression from the Mayhem after not finding much with the sound barrier. To pick off a few members here and will delay charge further. Okay, this is very much a great feeling for the Mayhem because things were looking like they were losing control of the map very fast here. Now they have this bridge controlled. And even though they're not going to use their ultimates on it, they don't really have ults to use on it. No shatter, no grab. They have this ability to operate on high ground and take pot shots at the members who cross the bridge, as you can see here. Then they can drop down. Yep, bomb going out. Rio shield up. Achara caught out. Will be picked off again. Just went too far forward. Now we get a DMAC top bomb. Yeah, they're just keeping him stuck inside. Yep. So he can't jump into the water. He will eventually get in there. But that's what I'm talking about. The bridge lets you set up opportunities. I didn't think they'd commit the self-destruct there, but they saw an opportunity. They saw Chara was too far forward. And now again, they could just leap down onto the bridge. There's always the threat of Chris knocking members off to the side. So there's so many reasons why the attack here for the charge on this bridge is dangerous. Tavik trying to bodyguard Hakobun here as he looks for a pick off with that right click hold. Rally's going to be out. Chara. Pushing forward. Char again, as you say, dangerously low. Armor just going to be sacking up onto the mayhem, lasting for that 30 seconds once the rally's gone. This is it. This is the charge's last chance. They've got huge ultimates, all six. They have to win this fight, and they know it. Got to make it work. Happy getting sunned up. Going he's, he's taken down. Doesn't get an opportunity to use a grab. BQP is going to be used, however. Shatter comes through. Locks up two in the back, but the sound barrier is there from Char to try to keep them alive. Can they turn this one around again? Bomb comes down from Hotpa. Doesn't find any picks. Hagopun pushing four. Transcendent's going to be out, keeping everybody topped up, and BQP gets rid of Kib. Two alts still available for the charge. 
Shatter and a grab, but nothing really to combo it with. Shatter's gonna be coming down. They just layer it they all win. in. Sound barrier comes down from Chris. He tries to keep keep everybody alive. So one down below half HP. Hogobun gonna get picked off, and now Chara gonna be dead. Suffering losses on both sides. Hoppa's gonna be popped out of the mech. Zephyr nearly suffering the same fate. Transcendence is in. Chu keeping the rest of the squad topped up, allowing for Hoppa to get back into the mech. The pin from Swan not gonna have a connection. Kip, Kip rejoining with the tracer, manages to get rid of the enemy Rhine. Needs a lot more than that though. Hoppa gonna be taken down out of that mech. It's the bubble trying to stay alive in that in that pilot form, but it's not building up for that next mech very rapidly. Still sitting at 37 percent. Very tense here, as we do see the grab coming through. High energy from BQB. Logs him up, the bomb thrown in right on top of it. Isn't it enough? It looks like it will be. Four members disappear. They can't get back onto the cart, and they will get halted. But to remember, the charge walked into this fight with six ultimates, and it feels like I'm part of a practical joke or something here with this match we're commentating right now, because these support ultimates are just on both sides, sometimes a little bit too late. We see it once again. And those two big ultimates do not come online, the grab and the shatter for the Guangzhou charge because of these early deaths. It's a six ult lead when we head into this, but it's just not enough regardless here. Look at the stuns and the setup here to grab Happy, so he cannot come through. Shu's just a little bit too late to get up there and heal him with this trance, and that's the pick that starts it all off here for the Florida Mayhem. I mean, that you can't get more ult efficient than that. I mean, you are crushing a six ult push very well played by the mayhem bqb sets it all up there in the end for that final uh fight as well the last part of the fight one death there for bqb nicely done is that going to be enough it was a, a pretty decent defense here again from the mayhem don't have too far to push charge going to be looking for that full hold yeah, and this is when it gets really nerve-wracking. You had control of the series. You've dealt with three types of mayhem now. You had the starting mayhem, right, where we saw the Widow duels with Saya player, fearsome as that is. Then you dealt with McCravey coming in. He, you know, defeats you. And, you know, now is this third different iteration from the mayhem coming through with Zephyr and Tavik rejoining. You're struggling that. It feels like Guangzhou Charge is just playing against three different teams right now. They're going to have to have a good defense. We will see oh. Akapun on the Ana. All right. So the big swapping in makes a lot more sense now that we see this May. This is really best. The best reason why this is possible is because it's not a huge push they've got to go to to win this map and really snowball this early with the May pick. It's also if they want to play in that high ground, you can get there so much faster with the wall. Boost up your entire team. Don't have to go up the staircase and find that choke. Go straight at them. For now, just going to be taking some pot shots. Walls off the Rhine. Rio's gonna be dropping back down as they pull back a bit. That was the idea, was to grab the Rhine at the front, but Rio's able to escape, so this doesn't end up being that effective. This is a great area to use Blizzard as well, and the choke at the, uh, that we're coming up on here, that archway, if they can get through there. Oh, oh shoot. We'll find the first kill as BQB gets taken down on the Sombra. Not building up too much in regards to that too. EMP. Yeah, trying to stay alive, trying to freeze them up, but they push forward, Hoppa. We'll finish them off. Uh, you know, the May is super survivable. It's very difficult to kill a May in a situation like this, but you're not, you're not really doing yourself any favors when you're on the attack and you're buying time like that and living. You built up more Blizzard charge with the Ice Block, which obviously gives you a uh, ton of ult charge if you're low health. So he's at 80% at the moment, but there's nothing to pair with the Blizzard yet. This is a diva -less composition. They don't have Shatter. They don't have EMP. It's not a great start year for the Mayhem, unfortunately, with this creative strategy. Let's go for the Nano May. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Throw that one out there. Wall comes up again. But it's not a, it's not a choke. It's just so much open space that realizes, okay, well, I, I guess I'll just go around it. Yes. So he's fine. However, Tavik does get, to, get, get rid of Chara. Yeah. All right. Good little shot coming through. Finds him. Hack still coming down for BQB, getting closer and closer to that EMP. Jumps Nano's back out. The translocator. Yeah, the Nano will be coming out, Kim. Tossing that hog open matches. Shu uses the transcendence. This is a big opening potentially for the with the blizzard. Yeah, this has to be it. Grav into Grav the blizzard. Comes in, answering one. Now the blizzard gonna be thrown down. Happy gonna be taken out by Zephyr Char going lower and lower, trying to stay alive. But the Vic, he's got those right clicks. They get the kills. 
Florida Mayhem looking like they paved their way to a point A tank. Now, this is where May is going to be at its strongest, is this archway here when Guangzhou is trying to engage and also the bridge. They can cut members across because the ice wall is about the width of the bridge. So it's very difficult for them to come back in here and contest A. Let's see how the wall goes down. EMP to open things. Shadow comes down from Swan. Hotpot hits the ground, stands back up. The mech's going to be broken. Walled off. Wall does come through. Advances to slink their way in there. Slight little gap on the side. Answering shatters in from Rio. Swan gonna get knocked down, but he gets the Zarya bubble. Topped back up. We'll start re-aggressing. Nano's thrown in on the ham. This time they have the cutoff on the Rio. No way to escape as he gets taken down. A more hammer swings to finish off some of these members of the charge. Two meters away from completion here on to A. Bomb gonna be thrown down by Hotbot into the back. Looking for a pickoff. Unable to get it. Makes it back into the mech, but now Hogapun. Now BQB gonna be eliminated. Happy! It's a triple kill here, looking for a little bit more. And how do you really stabilize here as the Mayhem? Even if they utilize the Blizzard with the Grav combo here, there's no self-destruct. The cart's rolling back. They're going to have to fight in the open. As you pointed out earlier, very difficult to utilize this until we get to that choke point, until we get to the bridge. And Guangzhou's been so good at slipping around the ice wall here. Blizzard needs to be a big one. If it's eaten by Hot Pots, not going to happen. He's slept at the moment. Which is actually a nice start, but he's uh, you know he's awake now. Let's 14 see if seconds. Vic, if he, he can make this work, they have a shot at this. If they deny this Blizzard, that could be it. Wall, Wall comes up. They're looking for Rio again. Blizzard's going to be thrown down. Grav through. Transcendence out. Rio going to be frozen here for the moment. Looking for the kill. Still not able to find it. Hotpa going lower and lower. Was heal denied for a moment. Now it's responding. Grav coming in. Shatter hits Rio. He's up onto the high ground. Now taking down as Chris finds the kill. Mayhem start advancing again. Two and a half meters left to go. Happy eliminated. Seems like they may have done it here in OT. As Hoppa will get picked off. Taken down to Vic. Sticking through with the May from the get go, really. And the, the wall makes kill it. On the Chara, maybe. The no. wall makes it to, impossible for them to tag the point there as well. We think that Tavik will probably swap heroes here, but there is another archway where the actual point is. So they were so struggling to the Guangzhou charge actually finish there. So this is. Uh, the moment where he can, if he can get there, again, get value out of his left clicks and the wall. They actually are going to stick with this incredibly rare, unique strategy here that we're seeing from the Florida Mayhem. Well, Tavik already using the ice block. We'll see if any fight comes out before that is available. Wall, like very powerful. Highly here. unlikely. Cart going to be contested right now by Hotbot here onto the low ground. Chris coming through. Looking for a target to isolate, doesn't find much. Now Rio dropping down, has to get that bubble. The wall comes up, but he's got the nano boost, and Swan will be taken down. It's not the wall they wanted. Tavik's going to be staggered here. He's got a blizzard. Goodbye. But that is, unfortunately, the wall was a bad angle. And for those who have never played May before, it's a little bit complicated to hit it exactly the way you want it in a quick motion, like Tavik was trying to do there. But Guangzhou Charge now have all the delay tools and the bridge controlled. Tavik can't really assault the bridge here with this May in such a way where they get isolated. Okay, well, exchanging bombs, passing like ships in the night. But BQB, he gets rid of Hotpa. Shatter out from Rio, catches so many on the bridge with the sound barrier. It's going to be well timed. Zephyr Ooh. barely lands on the boat, but he has no HP. Can't get top back up, kills himself off with a right click there. He's lobbing those orbs straight into the wall. The irony is the only way he gets up from the gondola is a bomb jump and the bomb jump is what kills him. Or if he just runs to the side by the sure. stairs. But, but he's he panicking, you know. Yeah. If he wants to get there quickly, then he's going to have to bomb jump but he doesn't get the chance to there. Yeah. Unfortunate. Ironic death. Tavik still has the blizzard here, but as mentioned, the bridge is the problem and you can't use the May wall to cross a bridge. You can block people from coming in but Guangzhou charges is going to sit on the other side. Grab's going to be coming out from both sides. Wall coming up. Sound barrier in from the Guangzhou charge. Happy Screen comes in and Happy will get taken down. Shatter in from Swan. Locks up multiple. They need the kills on the back of it. Seems like they're going to be able to find it. It's hot back. taken down now. Chara going to be taken down as well. The charge starting to advance the cart. Or rather, Florida starting to advance the cart. Charge having to get back over They've here. They've got a nano boost. Rio, he's all on his lonesome. He's completely surrounded. It's taken down the pile driver nice coming through. Wall. wall does block him off for a moment. They end up canceling it. Adaptive shield in the back, but they're freezing up Happy. And he gets shoved off. And that will be it. Mayhem will be extending this. Tied up 2-2. One more map to decide it all. We'll see who is going to be able to take this one away. Florida again. That pendulum swing. Looking like it's ringing, ringing true. We'll see who comes out on top when we come back from the break.
was going to happen. Game five, here we go. Tiebreaker has to come through to determine who the winner is between the mayhem and the charge. Down to the wire, pendulum swing keeps ringing true, but now I think it might have been stopped somewhere in the middle. This last round of control is going to determine it all. Yeah, I mean, what a crazy maze strategy we, we just saw. Very, feels very meta Athena. First team to really it use does. May, uh, you know, competitively uh, in esports sense. Um, and a lot of the X Meta Athena members and the Bella members are on both of these squads. So feels like we're we're reliving <laughs> history here. But going uh, way back in time. We have some subs, which makes sense given that that would oh. be a pretty map specific strategy. It will be apply back in for Tavik. So Tavik only coming in for the May. <laughs> All right, so he's a uh, it's a May one trick now, I suppose. And but gravy and well, for yeah. Okay, so changing it up. We'll be seeing these two come through. Is that going to be enough for them to close out on control, though? Eileen will be coming in for Kim, so uh, highly likely that we see some Sombra. Yes, and there's still always the possibility of Widow here as well as we head into our tiebreaker map, but yep. less likely with the map being Ilios, right? We already had our best Widow control map on Busan. Certainly. We have seen a little bit of Widow, especially on Ruins for Ilios, but it's much more difficult to use on Well and Lighthouse because it's almost impossible to get line of sight with all the structures that are around the control points. So really you're looking at, if we're going to see Happy on Widow, the Ruins. So that means makes sense Saya players not coming back in for this one. Very different type of map than our first control of this series. See so yeah, how this is going to be Preparing for either side, Ruins will be the first round that we're going to see so far. Happy not going to be hovering the Widowmaker, but could certainly swap over to it. And there it is. Yep, so with Rio on the Wrecking Ball, this makes sense. The disruption for Rio and Hapa, as well as Eileen at the back, can give you the opportunity to find picks and get kills. Uh, well, that is a, a pick is a kill. What I mean to say is a pick is that, you know, a single kill, that means you win the, the point. Yep. Especially in the first point, that is so critical. There's no one to challenge him right now. He just needs to hit headshots, basically. Find these lines of sight right through this little slit here. Yeah, it doesn't have that much visibility at the moment. So he's taking some shots, trying to get some tags where he can. Now they'll start pushing their way forward. Over onto the point, Happy. See where he wants to position himself. Got a shot coming through so far, not... Any meaningful damage, no kills to be found yet. Uh, hop over to the side, Happy. Getting full vision now of the point. Looking for a target. Winston up into his face, not gonna be able to take him down though. Nano. Hop up, just gonna be zipping around. Swan will be receiving the Nano, pushing forward, looking for Shu, and he'll be taken down with the help of BQB. Good opening, pulse bomb, not gonna find a stick. Can't get a kill here for Hotpa. As Mayhem tries to get the first cap, will be able to do so. As they inch off it for a moment, but Rio goes back in with a pile driver. EMP is ready, but there's not much to follow up, unfortunately, with the cop they're running. We may just have to see swaps come through for the Guangzhou charge, even though they have the Widowmaker ultimate here. It's not like you can EMP everyone and then just pop off as Widow. That doesn't happen. He's going to use it right now and then probably swap. It's not really an opportunity to find any targets, especially because Chris, who's the best target they could hit, is actually hiding Hagopun as well. So he swaps over to the Brigida here. And they're going to try to use the EMP for this retake. They're having mirror compositions, minus the Rhine. Just find a good angle. Ideally, would like to hit the supports. Let's get that hack there. I'm a swan, unable to complete it. As he jumps over to the side, EMP still going to be held. The hack now going to be coming through. Can't leap his way out to safety, but the rally will be coming in from Apply, helping to keep him alive. Jump into the back, Swan, trying to build up for that Primal Rage. Grab comes in from BQB, locking up a few Eileen. Able to stay alive, still holding the ult. Transcendence gonna be used. Chris is getting closer and closer. Sound barrier nearly online, just a few percent ahead of Chara. Very close race between both of these guys. The flip's still not quite there. Mayhem now at 60%. Eileen has to jump back. Keep himself away from that self-destruct. That's gonna be the Nano in. Swan trying to get on top of Shu again. This time gated out, stunned up. They find the kill. Hagobin taken down at the same time. Chris was hit. here, but they need the flip. 75% getting ready to roll through for Mayhem as they maintain control. Sound barrier out for Chara. Apply gonna be taken down. Now BQB and Chris, this will be the flip coming through finally. But a very nice hold. Great start to the map for Florida. Nice EMP from Eileen. Hits Chris, he can't barrier. He saves it after the EMP is done because it's a waste, of, a waste to use it in that fight. It may look like, okay, this is hopeless for Guangzhou Charge, 80 to 10. Sure, they got the flip, but they had to use two ultimates to do so. But 
the key thing to note is that Papa's got a grab, right? He's got high ground control here right now. Oh, oh he slept. So this perhaps not. could be devastating. They're trying to zone him back. Grab and Sedge is going to be coming through, locking up the members of the charge. Shoot just a few percent away from that transcendence. Now is going to have it online. Shadow comes down from Rio. Seems like he doesn't find much of anything. Sound barrier out from Chris. Shoot going to be matching. Grab pins him into the wall. Mayhem getting locked up. I'll go put the first one to fall. Now Swan taken down as Rio scoops a double kill. And Charge will maintain control as Rio just is wrecking them. And your worst nightmare as a Florida Mayhem is trying to deal with these EMPs when there are, you know, control tools for these chokes like the Shatter, like the Grav. Grav was good there after Hoppa woke up and the fight went their way. Now they have to deal with the Shatter. Not to mention that this entire area right now is free roam for Guangzhou Charge. It's hard to identify where Sombra is. Yeah, EMP comes through. Just hold the Shatter. Swan gets taken out. Try to grab as many kills as you possibly can, which, uh, well, the answer is a lot, it would seem. Chris barely making it out alive with okay. the help of that Zarya bubble. Eileen is usually what I like to call a Sombra idealist, meaning that they look for only ideal EMPs, perfect ones. But in this case, given that lead they have in the positional advantage, just walked in and used it. It's good enough. You know, just charging his way back to safety, still holding on to the Shatter. Really the only ult that Charge to have, Mayhem. Yeah. Have a lot in their war chest right now to try to get this flip, but they need to do it. Uh, as charge are up over 90%. Yeah. Hoppa is high energy, so he can actually build this very quickly. And I'll throw in, but Swan can't really get into position to get any swings off. Shatter comes down, they lock him up, stun him over to the side, but we'll be jump back up. Rally's going to be out from either team. Sound barrier now through charge. Looking to close this one out. Uncle Putin going to be taken down. Swan eliminated. Things looking great for the charge so far. Mayhem trying to turn it around. The bomb comes in. McGravy manages to find two. The Ryan and Zarya take it away, but BQB now Chris going to be lost in the fight. The charge still grinding the way back from the brink. Managed to take out Mayhem. OT plummets down, and they will get the first round of Ilios. One of the problems with having specialist players and having the ability to sub in and out as Mayhem has is that when what you're running doesn't work, when you, what you're running doesn't work, you can't swap. Yep. However, on the other side, Happy is a great Brigida player. So after you know the initial Widow to go according to plan, per se, they were easily able to put him over to the Brigida and run a more mirrored composition. And it doesn't it doesn't feel like you're watching Happy play an offer because he's practiced both the Widow and the Brigida. And, you know, for someone like Sire Player, if we go back to his Widow attempt, way back in game one, the beginning of the series, he struggled. He had to swap over the Zarya. There were holes there. All in all, a competitive start to the round, but just want to highlight Happy's flexibility and why compositions like this work so well for the charge, because they practice them so much, and the hero pools are appropriate in any given situation. They can run two comps. We'll just be the Winston v. Winston here, as Rio goes forward. Gonna get those zaps in. This could determine the entire match right here. If Charge can close out well. Jump back over to the side. It has you know, shifted back and forth, left and right side of the screen at the moment. Seems like teams can't really decide where they want to square off. Constantly shifting around each other, looking for some sort of opening to get a pick. Pop a low. Yeah, McGravy as well, though. Fairly far forward, Swan. Barely making it out with his life. It's actually going to be Mayhem who come up with the cap and the first two picks. The Hog have been doing a ton of damage actually in that fight and kind of Hot helping to weaken them. That's going to be a nice stagger. huge remack, yeah, or sorry, demac. Nice he wishes done. he could remack. It's not going to happen though. Yeah, he's going to have to jump off the side. There it is. Yep. So very slow return to the point, unfortunately. And that means a lot of free control meter for the Florida Mayhem. They control the choke. BQB has high energy. I know I keep talking about this, but that means more damage in these fights as the Zarya is the DPS. It's not a damage dealer in game, but certainly the highest damage on the team in yep. this composition. Oh, a BQP. Dangerously low. Has to get top back up. Has that grab online. Charge worked their way in onto the point. It's going to be waiting for an opportunity. We'll go ahead, throws it right onto the inside of the wall. Locks up one. The Rio going lower and lower, but the transcendence from Shu helps keep him alive. Now going to be matched by Hagopun. Grab out on the side. Does manage to find Swan up top. But they can't kill him. They can't finish him off the Primal Rage. Giving him that last ability in the fight so far. Now Primal's going to be in from Rio. Sound Barrier in as well. Hot butt dumps the bomb, but doesn't find any picks. They have still in control. 
Chara manages to go ahead, just ride the Rim of the Well, keeps himself safe, but Foot does finally come through. Charge gain control as Mayhem hit 65%. Feels like Rio just can't find uh, any place to stand right now. He has finally get back onto this, but look, they're going to attack at the moment. Well, I'm after McGrady, finds a nice pick off. Eileen taken down. Is that enough for them to get this flip back in, though? Rockets through for McGravy. Play this one out patiently. BQP gonna be taken down. Chara finds the counter kill. Transcendence is now gonna be in shoe. Popping that to keep everybody topped up. Hagopun gonna be holding on to his. His happy does get taken down, but the flip is still yet to come through as Rio keeps playing the corner. They cannot lose this this early. It would be a tragedy. Oh, nice move by Hoppa. Yeah. Sending him flying into the pit. That was huge. They want to fight just now without Happy. Guangzhou charges some of the best stats in the league of winning fights down members. It's insane how often they're able to do it. Yeah. Happy and Hoppa there. Their know, OT win rate as well. Yeah, their OT win rate is also quite high. But Hoppa comes through after Happy is dead with that kill there. And they stabilize without support ultimates, mind you. Crazy to see a fight one like that. And now the mayhem no longer at an advantage. Grabs even here. Yeah, everybody's going to be fighting inside for now. Hagobun pushing forward, making sure that his teammates are That's quite all right. He's Happy. not going to have it when a grab comes out from Happy. Yeah, Happy going to be tagged low. Nearly six ultimates online for the charge. Shu is needing a little bit more. Grab comes out. Eileen going to get locked up. They've managed to finish him off. Bomb into the back. McGravy not looking for a pick. Not able to find one. Hotba throwing his own mech. And he's going to find McGravy. Takes him Pilot form Diva still going to be pistoling away, trying to build up that remake, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to find it. Primal Rage out from Rio, now going to be expiring. Couldn't get the knock into the pit, but he pushes forward, manages to find a fly. Now BQB going to be taken down the charge in control of the point. Three members about to be dead on the side of Mayhem. Now McGravy shredded out of the mech yet again. The OT starting to take away. Mayhem kicked off both of these rounds with the cap. Building a very high percentage, but Charge come back in. They, they gain control, and they do not surrender it. I they mean, take Gilios, they take the series. We have to give so much credit to Hoppa. Double self-destruct kill there, and the knockoff kill onto McGravy in those final moments. He came up clutch in game five, and it's because he was able to hit those big moments right when they needed them. He's able to win them that final map and win them this series. Great play overall from the Mayhem. They showed us very much a lot of depth, a lot of specific strategies, a lot of subs that came in for those specific strategies. But at the end of the day, it's the solid lineup here of the Guangzhou Charge that prevails. Very tight series. We go to the game five that you were kind of predicting earlier on tonight. But we got to see a little bit of everything here. I feel like EMPs, we saw the Widow versus Widow. We saw a rookie player step on the stage for the first time and have a nearly deathless game. Yeah. I mean, what a treat, what we just watched. Yeah, I mean, fantastically done. Numbani was, you know, for, for the gravy, one of the best debuts that you could ever hope for. Topping it off with a series win would have been even better, but unfortunately for him and for the rest of the Florida Mayhem, unable to grab it. Well, they showed us some new things here. They showed us that they, they still are able to play at the level of their opponents. They're able to come up with some successes. Just getting that win, pushing across that final finish line, still a little bit too difficult. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Some of the highlights, though, from that final map. As Ilios, there's a lot of insanity here. Yeah, when we take a look at uh, this map in particular, it was most impressive that Guangzhou Charge was able to stabilize and swap their heroes back to a more meta composition. Eileen remained on the Sombra given that the EMP charge was ready and he was able to continue to roll with that. See McGravy get this double kill in overtime, it's huge, but the EMP coming through afterwards is just better, unfortunately. Yeah. Gets the hack there on the McGravy as well, so he can't dematrix, he gets taken out. Insane plays by Eileen. Then we go to, well, Hoppa gets this double kill here at the end that closes it out. But before that, got the kill with the boosters that actually killed McGravy that saved them on that fight that might have actually brought us to a third round on Lighthouse. Well, let's go ahead and see now who our player of the match is presented by Omen by HP. A couple different people I think that you could select, but it will be Shu who kicked off the series in a fantastic fashion. Yeah, Shu had a bunch of good moments here on Busan, and that's where he really started to light things up for their squad, but also some really patient transcendence timings. And I think that's what he really won out against Agupanen, is just finding those at the last possible second, which allows his team to win the fight. Here's another sleep on the BQB that we saw. I mean, Shu, 
He's a rising star right now here in the Overwatch League. He certainly is. I really appreciate the Maywall at the end from Tavik trying desperately to save VQP's life right there, but uh, it wasn't enough. Certainly Set the wall not. the wrong way. But uh, yeah, really good stuff from Shu. Congratulations to him on earning player of the match. But let's go ahead and take a look at what this has done to the standings. In, uh, because Charge, they've been back and forth a little bit, you know, yeah. nearly beating the Titans, having some uh, really rough games here and there. They but. jump up just past Dynasty in the eighth place. They're still in the running for playoffs here. We still have a lot ma more matches left. Yeah. Um, but I think what's really important to note is that this was a really close series. So they weren't able to steal as many maps away from Mayhem for map differential as they would have liked. We feel really good with a 4-0 win here. You only feel okay about getting that one map extra. Yeah. Mayhem, however, going to have to go into... Uh Crunch mode, I suppose, to try to make up for some of these losses. Still sitting now down at the bottom of the standings. Need to overcome that. Need to start excelling and getting some wins on the board. But guys, we have one more match coming your way tonight. That's going to be the Spark going up against the Shock. A heavily anticipated one. It's been some back and forth between those orgs on Certainly. Twitter. So to see who's going to come out on top. So stay tuned. We'll see that in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered. 